On your mark, get set, act like a baby. That's right, these people are wiggling around and shaking toys in front of a camera to best mimic this on-screen infant and ultimately determine which one's the bigger baby. And this whole thing isn't some sort of 90s throwback here. It's science. The objective of this project is to understand how babies move, understand patterns of how babies move when they're very young, and how this could be a potential marker for neurodiverse conditions like autism. That's a senior lecturer with the University of Sussex, describing what's the deal with this game of baby boogie here, which fortunately for these scientists is not an activity that involves those infant snot to mouth suckers, but a dance off. And so what we're doing here is using techniques from computer vision, which is an application of machine learning to images and video data in order to ascertain the position of their limbs over time and look at the patterns of how they're moving around. Yeah, you see this team with this university's baby lab has a first of its kind study called Baby Grow, which is seeking to compare baby movements like wriggling, sitting, and crawling to babies' social and communication skills. As noted here by this professor of comparative cognition with the University of Sussex, who spoke to the Associated Press. The Baby Grow project is very novel in its approach to looking at motor action from birth, but also looking at it unfolding over time. So Rob than taking snapshots at six months or 12 months. We're looking at it every week to see how it's unfolding, how it's changing in our infants who are at high risk and low risk of autism. So scientists don't yet know what types of baby movements could suggest an early neurodivergence diagnosis, but they believe that monitoring babies at this critical early stage in their development could help determine what their later lives could be like. So in this analysis, they want to see what variability in baby movements might tell us. Across things like limb movements and variations on range, speed, and direction. Experts say in the early stage of child development, those movements are reflexive, not voluntary. Unlike those of our adults here, which are very much voluntary. The core technology behind these types of computer vision methods is uh, machine learning. So it uses some form of pose estimation or human pose estimation. So far, we've only been looking at kind of off the shelf human pose estimation models which are trained on adult data, which obviously has some complexities when applying them to babies. So they haven't been, they don't always have particularly good performance. And that's where some of the challenges lie in applying this kind of analysis. Of course, to study babies, you can't just rely on adults pretending to be babies or babies pretending to be adults. You need actual babies. Hence, this Baby Grow project wants to recruit both citizen scientists and a hundred unsuspecting baby scientists to help collect movement samples in family homes, which scientists think will give them enough data to analyze. The project says that over the course of the first 18 months of their lives, babies taking part in the study will be outfitted in a high-tech onesie with built-in motion detectors. And parents will regularly take and send video back to the researchers to make sure the sensors inside the onesies are functioning. These scientists are actually currently recruiting infants and parents in the UK. And the work this research requires doesn't actually seem that out of the ordinary for new parents, many of whom have already outfitted their child with high-tech clothing to collect as much data as possible, and are already recording daily baby videos to text over to Gigi. This Baby Grow team notes it's made up of researchers passionate about early development and autism research. And with all this baby movement, movement data, they hope they'll be able to better understand the early signs of neurodivergence. This kind of research is the way forward for us to determine children who might be at risk of autism earlier than we currently do. And I think it's our best hope of also starting to think about the development of motor interventions earlier so that we're not waiting until these children actually develop social and communication deficits before we start treating them. Now these adults going full Ally McBeal here are simply demonstrating some of this baby movement detection technology at the recent Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition in London, an annual event that highlights some of the UK's most interesting science research. But scientists ultimately hope that studying baby boogieing will help target early treatments for neurodivergent conditions. Our next steps would be to think about what are the features that might be associated with risk. We're using computer vision and AI technology to see patterns that our eyes can't see. And these would be targeting things like the variability and the complexity of the infant's movements. Where we think that children might be at risk we're hoping to be able to indicate that to parents and GPs much earlier on so that they can receive support and treatment 
um, within their infant years rather than waiting to the toddler years and beyond. And rather than waiting for us to put out our next video, why not subscribe to At The News Refresh to get notified whenever we drop one? We put out new weird and interesting news stories each and every day, like this one about a stegosaurus that's going up for auction on Wednesday and could be yours for like six million bucks. Cheap at any price, really.